Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you for taking time out to spend with me. Um, today I'm coming at you with the 15 facts about me tag. It's a little bit of a rambly tag, but I really want to explain the facts and just for you guys to get to know me a little bit, see how I am, and hopefully you can relate. I would really love it if each of you could leave one fact about yourself in the comment box. And if you're interested, just please keep watching. Fact number one, I'm super empathetic and internalize everybody's problems. That's so bad. I mean, it's good to be empathetic because when people share their personal problems with you, I mean, for me personally, that's a huge compliment. If people are open or willing to share personal things with me, I really, I love that. But at the same time, if I take other people's problems to be my own, it's super tough on just in my life and me in general because I'm very emotional and very sensitive to other people especially. So... By internalizing other people's problems, like if they're going through a breakup or divorce, I feel like I'm the person going through a breakup or divorce, and it's just really has a huge effect on me, and that's not healthy at all. And like even for the career path I want to pursue, working with children and youth care and youth, um, taking care of them after they come out of abused homes or whatever the case may be, if I internalize their problems, can you imagine how bad that would be for like me and my family? It just would not be good. I need to work on that. I, I don't know, like, do you guys, are you guys like that? Because if you are, tell me what, what you do to kind of cope with that, I guess, or how you disengage yourself or still be there for people, but, like, protect yourself at the same time, because I really need to work on that. So Fact number two is that I tend to follow my heart and my gut more than using my brain to always rationalize decisions. And I know some people are probably going to be like, you're so stupid for doing that or whatever, but that's just how I do it. I... Most of the time, like, every night I pray when I go to bed, and I just ask God for guidance, and I always think to myself, everything that happens, happens for a reason, and there's a greater purpose to it, and maybe I don't understand it now, but one day I will, and that's just, like, basically how I lead my life, and also, when it comes to making friends or people or whatever, I don't necessarily use my brain to think, like, is this a good person, is this that, whatever, of course I use that, but I also follow my heart and just the vibes I get off that person, if they're good vibes to me or if it makes me feel happy... I go forward with like talking to them or whatever the case is. So yeah, I guess it's fact number two is I follow my heart and my gut more than I do my brain sometimes. Fact number three is that I'm a mommy's girl. And normally you hear like mama's boy and daddy's little girl, but I've never really gone down that road. I've always been a mommy's girl. And every single night I talk to her about how my day went or just life or if I want her opinion on something. I don't know. I just talk to her all the time. I give her like a billion hugs in the day. I just like, I wouldn't say addiction because that sounds really wrong. But like I'm just so attached to my mom. And like I know even once I get married I'm going to be like on the phone with her all day long every single day. Just talking to her all the time. I don't know, like, I respect her so much, and every every mother is great, obviously. There's things that every child appreciates or respects in their mom, but my mom, one thing I really appreciate about her is that she grew up in Pakistan, born in Pakistan. Her family was very conservative, and even after she moved here, she didn't, she didn't like, stop us from doing anything, like me and my siblings. She always grew with us, and of course she had her morals and values always, but she grew with us, and that made living kind of like two in two cultures easier because I'm it's eastern in my household western outside the door so that's been hard to balance at times in my life and she's grown with us so that's always really really helped so yeah so fact number three is that I am a mommy's girl fact number four is that I've never had a full-on pimple in my life and thank you mom for this because she had clear skin so I got that from her and I'm a million times thankful to her for that. Um, I do get like little bumps every once in a while, like I've been sick all of this week, that's why I'm like a bit swollen and stuff, but I have like a, like a little bump there, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a bump I got as a result of like being sick and stuff, but that's about as bad as it gets and it goes away really quickly. Unfortunately, my little sister was not so lucky and she didn't get that from my mom, so she struggled basically her whole life with bumps and pimples and things, and it's made her kind of insecure, but she's beautiful and she knows it, so it's all good, but I'm just so thankful that I've gotten clear skin my whole life, and I hope it stays that way. Fact number five is that I always prefer the natural look over the done up look, and you'll probably notice that as a theme in like all my videos because I'm wearing minimum makeup, like today for example, just a layer of mascara and some lip color. Of course I'm not totally bare natural, but my look is t lend 
what am I saying, leans more that way than done up with eyeshadow and all that kind of stuff. I mean, for girls who like to do that, more power to you. I mean, it's fun to play around with and everything, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I love looking more natural than done up. So that's about it. Act number six, I love food. And in case you can't tell by my chubby cheeks that are semi-swollen right now, but I really, really love food. Of course, like, everything is good in moderation, but I enjoy food. I enjoy... Um, going to restaurants with friends and trying new things. Well, I like to think that I like to try new things, but I always like to have a friend with me who, in case I don't like my food, won't mind having it <laughs> because I don't want to waste it, of course. Um, but yeah, some people will argue that I'm very picky. What is happening here? Okay. Um, but yeah, in general, I love food, and the two things that I have, the two things I have an addiction to are burgers oh my god I go weak in the knees for burgers and I don't know if you guys have a restaurant near you called um, La Belle et la Boeuf Beauty and the Beef um, in English we just got one that opened in downtown Montreal recently and I went there yesterday and had the best meal of life so if you guys want to if you guys want to um, go on my Instagram I'll link it below and you can see pictures of, like what I had yesterday it was amazing and another thing that I'm addicted to that I think pretty much everybody in my real life knows is that I have an addiction to egg in a hole for breakfast every single morning I've had that I think every single morning for like the past seven months or something at least it's like healthy but I mean maybe some people argue the carbs aren't healthy but you need carbs okay so so yeah so those are my two addictions burgers I get a whole but just food in general I love I love anything food fact number seven I think we're on seven is that when I retire and get like really old and just want to chill out you know I want to get an equestrian farm because I love horses, I don't ride horses, I've never ridden horses, I just, I have had a friend in high school who used to actually like ride horses, like proper ride horses and competitions and stuff, and my English teacher in high school, she rode horses, so I used to love listening to their stories, and I don't know, there's just something about horses that is so calming and peaceful to me, and I just love them, and I wish I could be one of those people who rode horses, but I'm just not. But I would love to have an equestrian farm with a bunch of horses that I just take care of all day long and just chill out with. And I'm sure it's a lot more work than I'm thinking that it is, but I'm just going to keep dreaming for now. Fact you. number eight, um, if it comes between saving and spending, I'm more of a saver than a spender. I don't know why this is, but I do appreciate it when I see the number of my bank account go up. Like, that's the best feeling of life. Um... I just, I think the reason why is because I started working when I was like 16, which is not that early for people here, I guess, but I don't know, for me, I was like, I guess I'm a late bloomer in everything in life, but for me, I was like, oh my god, I'm so young to be working. Wait, was I 17? I don't know, 16 or 17. And I don't know, I just paid for college myself, I'm paying for university myself, so knowing how expensive it can be, I've always just tended towards... a like saving and spending because I don't want to be in debt for my whole life that would really suck so I'm just trying to stay on top of everything and so far it's going great thank you thank you god <laughs> for giving me the strength to save but um yeah I'm more of a saver than a spender and I'm okay Fact with that. number nine is um I've traveled to quite a few places in Europe and I also went to South Asia one time so let's see so I went to Pakistan in 2009 for three months it was the first time I ever went and that was the only time I ever went so far in my life. And that was for three months. And then for my graduation trip in high school, um, with our graduating class, you can either pick to go to New York for four days or Europe for, I think, 12 to 15 days. And I'm really grateful for my parents who um, paid for my trip and let me go to Europe. It was one of the best experiences of my life, and I'm super grateful. And I got this sweatshirt when I went of all the places that I visited. So... So I went to Venice, Rome, and Florence in Italy, and then, what does it say, Austria, I went to Innsbruck, Austria, I went to uh, Munich, Germany, then I went to Zurich, Switzerland, sorry, it's been a while, man, it was 2011, so Zurich, Switzerland, Paris, France, and then London, England, and that was an amazing trip. Fact number 10, I got my driver's license the third time around, and... I was really embarrassed for a long time because of that, but then I realized it's pretty common for people to fail their first time. Um, I'm like, I'm very, very confident in what I'm able to accomplish if it 
if it requires like your brain like the theory exam no problem easy peasy I'm sure I was like guaranteed I felt like I could do it but anytime it comes to doing anything like physical I do not have confidence in myself and I'm trying to like work on that and by having like no confidence in myself people can easily read that and that really did lead to why I didn't do well the first two times so fact number 11 <laughs> is that I've worn glasses since I was, I think, 6 or 7. Even now I'm wearing contacts, but I do have glasses. I'll go get them real quick. So they are these. I just recently purchased these. Um, they're Ray-Bans. I don't know really what kind of them are. I don't want to put them on because I'm wearing contacts, but like... Does that do anything? That'll just look really weird. Um, but yeah, so I've been wearing glasses like my whole life. I want I want to get laser eye surgery eventually, but your eyesight has to be oh my god, your eyesight has to be stable for you to have that done. And every year my eyesight is still changing. Even though I'm 20, I think it's supposed to be stable by now, but for me it's not. So I'm just waiting for that to happen. And then when it does, I'm gonna get laser eye surgery. Um, but for now, I just wear contacts and glasses. And I just rotate between the two. But I've had them my whole life. Fact number 12 is that my favorite kind of shopping to do is school supply shopping and that's no surprise considering I love school and my favorite school supply specifically to shop for is post-it notes. In fact, I remember in my last English course I ever took in college, the teacher, somehow she knew about my addiction to like post-it notes and on the last day of class she brought a big box of donuts for the class from Tim Hortons. And for me, she bought a special pack of post-its, and I was like, oh my goodness. So when she walked in, everybody was like, donuts, and I was like, post-its. It was really ridiculous. Everybody laughed at me, but it's okay, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> Fact number 13 is that I am super affectionate. I love people who like to give hugs, and I love giving hugs, and people who are like not touchy-feely, I guess per se, probably think I'm really weird and try to run away from me, but I'm just like, give me a hug. <laughs> I don't know, I, like I hug my mom a million times a day, but she's my mom, but still like even with my friends, I like to sit close to them. Whenever I'm talking to somebody, I'm like turn in towards them. It's just like, I don't even think about it. It just, that's just how it is. And I don't know, is that weird? I don't think that's weird, but yeah, I'm super affectionate and I love affectionate people. Fact number 14 is that I want to have a lot of kids. I don't care how my body will look. Those are superficial things. I always grew up like, I felt like I didn't have any cousins like where I, wherever I grew up. I just had friends and stuff, but sorry if you can hear the trucks. I, I felt like lonely a lot of the time and friends... Friends are friends, you know what I mean? But like having like your close relatives and stuff is a completely different thing and I never had them so I always felt alone. And I always thought to myself when I have a family I want to have a lot of kids so that even if we are far from relatives they don't feel alone because I know how much that sucks. So yeah, I want to I wanna have a lot of kids, like six kids. Is that a lot? I think so. Some people are like one is enough or zero but I'm like six. That's where we start. <laughs> so. Fact number 15, one that you guys probably already know, is that I have an addiction to school. Not addiction, but I love school so much. And I remember starting kindergarten, like, the first day. It was, like, the most beautiful, epic day of my life, of any fi fi five year fi I can't talk. Five-year-old's life. And I actually went, like, to check out schools a year before I actually started. And I thought that I was starting the particular particular year that I was looking at schools. And when I found it, I wasn't starting that year. I was, like, heartbroken. I was like, I don't love you people anymore. You're not letting me go to school. Don't talk to me. And I was like really, really upset. I remember my um, kindergarten teacher's name was like Miss Kuna. And she had like this 100 club, which was like, if you could count to 100 without making any mistakes, you'd be part of this club. And it was like my goal in life to be like part of the 100 club. And I got in on my first try. I was like so proud of myself. And like, I remember when we were learning like the words like the or it or and or like whatever. It was so hard for me to understand how to pronounce the because like T-H-E like like what does that even mean <laughs> like I don't know it was mind-blowing for me so I have a picture here baby picture that I wanted to show you this is me when I was like I think about three years old and I was wearing my brother's backpack and school clothes um, I was just like ready from birth guys for school I was like I am taking over <laughs> that's it guys I hope that you enjoyed this video I'm sorry if it was kind of long but I really wanted to explain everything and I wanted you guys to see how I am because I find like that's how I really like to find people to watch on YouTube is I like to know how they are and see if I can relate to them so I hope that some of you guys can relate to me and once again thank you so much for taking time out please subscribe to show support I love all of you and I hope I see you next Saturday bye guys